This tag is a DIY public land, archery only elk hunt, and I'm here with my family. Uh, we're in a wall tent together, and Braxton and I are gonna split off and go hunt just the two of us. Braxton is my husband, my best friend, my coach, and my caller on this hunt. When we, when we figured out we were coming to New Mexico uh, for this elk hunt, you know, we just kind of started looking over mapping, you know, trying to figure out the unit as much as we could just, you know, by e-scouting and things like that. So got here a few days early, ran around listening for bugles, not necessarily trying to find the, the right bull, but trying to find where the elk were hanging out, what kind of terrain they were, you know, really focused on. And, and so when we climbed this ridge the day before opener, we had bugles all around us. It was, they were literally lighting up 360 degrees. Um, but one in particular caught our attention. Second bugle, he's so old. Like sometimes they're so old, they are done red. Like getting a bugle out. They're within 200 yards right now. He sounded much more dominant. He was a lot more of an, an aggressive, like raspy, um, growling bugle. We marked that and decided that was our spot for opening day. It's finally opening morning. It feels like Christmas morning. We've waited for this all year long. It's already starting to get a little bit light, but so we're gonna head up. Got bulls bugling all around, but if we can get in close enough without letting them know we're coming. Jessica set up within 100 yards and then start calling. After that initial encounter with that younger bull, beagles were lighting up everywhere. In previous years, I can recall moments where I didn't hear a bugle for hours. And so when I heard one, we chased it. And so we'd hear a bugle and we'd drop down, climb up, and then hear another bugle the opposite direction. And it was fun and equally frustrating because I felt like every time we went one place, there was one talking to us back where we just came from. We just started to make our way up the ridge and we stopped for a brief second to catch our breath and we heard a crack. There's actually two bulls up here. I think they're the same two from last night. We're almost to the top. Oh, that was him. Cows. A handful of cows is what I saw. Braxton saw a bull and so we stayed put, we sat still. Those cows fed into 20 yards and she knew something was off. The lead cow totally pinned us and um, they ended up veering off. They didn't catch our wind, but it was, they could tell that something was off and decided to go a different route. And I didn't even realize at the time that there was a bull with them um, until they ran, up, <laughs> they ran up the mountain and that bull lit up. It's not uncommon this time of year that there's a bull right behind them. He's, he's following them in the back. He's, He's just taken their lead. And I thought, here's my chance. I might have a shot at 20 yards, but it didn't pan out. But that's how it is in elk hunting. Some rain came through. It wasn't uh, a super heavy, heavy rain, but so we were like, okay, we'll just wait it out. We'll just lay low, let this rain pass. the bulls started lighting up. 
we heard the bugle, we heard the bull, he started talking, but he was smart about it. That's what drew me to him more. He wasn't talking consistently like a young bull. He wasn't just ripping bugles left, left and right. He wasn't talking very much anyway. Like he's not, he's not acting young right now, so. So we started slowly making our way in. We knew he was close, like way closer than we imagined him to be at that point. And right about that time, it sounded like a, a bull was raking a tree. He came in, it's really honestly a blur. When I saw my shot, my jaw was literally on the ground because I realized I shot him further back than I had wanted to. I was, I was so in shock that I just potentially screwed up that moment. I didn't do what I was trained to do. <laughs> and um, I didn't have time to range him. I just went with my instinct. I say we get him to the morning. We're gonna find the bull. He's bleeding pretty good. But I think we're gonna find him. Uh, I didn't I didn't let that moment slow down. I didn't go through the motions like I normally would. Now we pray. I didn't get another shot on him. He he walked off and it was a really long night. I knew it was gonna be a really rough night, just in general. I knew I was gonna have a hard time sleeping. Ended up waking up around 3 a.m. As I was sitting there journaling, I was thinking, you've put all this work into this opportunity for the last year. You've, you've busted your ass, you've done the work, and that's all you can really control as a hunter. Oh Lord, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. Go. We're back here where we last found blood last night. We are here at first light and praying for a positive outcome. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is something that a lot of bow hunters will experience um, at some point in the field. We followed him for about, I don't know, probably 50 yards and kind of lost blood. And then the doubt really came in my mind. I knew we weren't gonna give up. I knew we were gonna do everything we could. I um, started praying like crazy, to be honest. Um, I, I, I just prayed for a sign. I just kind of started circling around, you know, and praying and, and, you know, thinking back to all the, you know, time and effort Jessica has put into elk hunting in the mountains and, and, and talking to God and just, you know, just telling him to give me a sign. Whatever that sign was, I was just, begging for it. Literally out loud, I was by myself. We had all split up looking for anything and everything. And A speck of blood on a rock. And I had I'd bent down on my knee and, and I was trying to, you know, make sure, confirm before I called everybody back on him. 
And, and about that time when I, I knew in my mind that, yep, this, this is blood, this is the trail we need to be on. And I turn around. We hear you, babe. And to see some, you know, the closest person in my life achieve some goals that she's been struggling with for the last few years was, I don't think I've cried in a long time, and it brought tears to my eyes. It was, it was one of, one of those moments that I'll never forget in the Oakwoods. I really had to dig deep in that moment. I feel like it takes a different kind of drive to be persistent when you haven't punched an elk tag for multiple years in a row. I also don't think that persistence is a natural trait. I think it's one that evolves when you want something bad enough. It finally came together. Everything that I had worked my butt off for, all the preparation, um, both, both physically and mentally and emotionally, spiritually, like everything came together for this moment. These animals mean the world to me. Um, I know that's hard for some people to understand because we do hunt them, but to see someone who is so special in your life achieve their goals, for her to, you know, push through that, push through that pain, you know, go through a sleepless night, and for her to find that bull herself in the way that it all went down, it was just, it was just a beautiful thing. This is definitely a redemption story for me. You know, pushing through the uncomfortable times and the training, the, the noise, I was able to take all those experiences and bring it out here on the mountain and how I reflected on myself, how I wanted to be better in the field and almost taking those uncomfortable times and, and figuring out a way to make them comfortable for me and have, having to ask myself, how bad do you want it? I'm Jessica Byers and this is my redemption story. That was such a badass hunt.